So you just finished building your website and now you're looking for a few ways to instantly improve it. Let me show you five ways to instantly improve your website. I'm gonna show you how to add new pages to your website once you've already created your website with a template. After that, I'll even show you how to import individual page templates so that you can save time without having to build your pages from scratch. We're gonna use Elementor to build those pages, of course. This is so that as your business grows, you can add more pages for services or features or whatever add-ons you need in the future. After that, I'm gonna cover how to add new users to your website as well. As your business grows, you're probably gonna have new employees underneath you who might want to work on the website for you in your absence. I'm gonna show you how to add users so that they can log on to your website and make changes. Next, I'm gonna cover site security. I'll cover how to improve your site security so that you can prevent it from getting attacked by hackers. After that, I'm gonna talk about website speeds and page speeds so that you can ensure that your website ranks well on Google. And finally, if you stick around with me till the very end of the video, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the one thing I get asked about the most when it comes to managing a new website. So stick around to the very end and find out what that is. So first, let's jump into adding a new page to your website. Okay, so in order to add a new page, we're gonna go over to the Pages tab and you can just directly click on Add New Page, but it's also kind of nice to be able to check out all the pages on your website before you add a new one. Home, About, Services, Contact, and then we have a privacy policy that's like a draft. You can trash that. So we have only four pages on your website. If you wanna add a new one, click on Add New Page. You're gonna title it, which is what's gonna show up right here. So we'll title it first. Oh, by the way, this is the block editor in WordPress and it's terrible. <laughs> but anyways, we can add a title. So let's just say, I don't even know what page to add. I was thinking about it. I could do like a social media page, I guess, or like a locations page or something like that. Like here, let's do a blog blog. Once you're done titling it, just click on publish and publish again. And that is how you create a page inside of your website. Done. So now we close out of this, we go to pages and you've added a new page. So now you'll see blog is available. So now there's three different options you have. First of all, I got to show you how to edit it. So we click on edit and then you would say edit with Elementor. And then from here, you can either go to the folder icon and use some templates from Elementor. So you can use any of their templates or you can go to starter templates and you can have one of these pages installed if you want to. So that's how you can create a page and install a template onto your individual page. I'm just gonna create a quick little section really fast and just say, this is the page. This is the new page. And we'll just kinda, let me just quickly add like a little background picture or something. Do that one cause it's dark. And we'll say center, no cover, no repeat. And then we will go and make this full width, minimum height. And we're going to center, center. This is the new page. And then we can just add a background overlay as well. Okay, update to save our work, done. So now all that's gonna be here is this section, the header and the footer, that's it. So we can close out of Elementor. So now whenever you view your website, you're probably wondering, well, how do I get to that page? Cause it's not up here. Well, you gotta customize your header menu. So we're gonna go to customize. We're gonna go to menus, main menu. And like I was showing you in the last video, when we were working on the header and footer, you click on add items and you'll see under pages, the new page you created is right here. You just click it and add it and it's right here. So let's put it above contact because usually contact is on the end of your navigation menu and then click on publish. All right, and now you'll see that blog is available over there. We click on it and you're gonna see your page. There it is. This is the new page. There's the picture I put back there and there's the footer and there's the header. And you'll notice that it's this small because, well, I didn't put anything else in there. And that's okay. I just wanted to show you how to add a new page. You can be responsible for adding all of the content that you want. But anyways, that's how you add a new page and how you link it to your navigation menu so now people can go and visit it. Because if it's not in your navigation menu, people aren't gonna be able to go and visit your blog website. Technically, if they knew the URL, so if they knew that the blog page was there, somehow, miraculously, and they somehow knew that beginnersguidetowebsites.com slash blog is the URL, they could technically go and visit it even if it wasn't in your navigation menu right there. Because all they need to do is just go to that URL. This just makes it so that visitors can see see it, recognize it's an option, and then go and visit. But again, that's just what they're gonna see. I'm gonna show you how to add new users to your website. And you can add one of six different types of users to your website. So you have the administrator, the editor, the author, 
the contributor, the viewer, and the subscriber. Let me show you how to do that right now. So to add a new user, we're gonna go to the new users tab. And you'll notice that we also can just go straight in and add a new user. But first, again, I'm just gonna show you. If you go to users, you'll just be able to see everyone that's here. And right now I've got my admin account. As you can see, the role is an administrator and that's the only user on here. But let's say you hire someone to work on your website for you and you don't wanna give them your username and password to log in. Well, you can just create a user for them and then they can log in with that username and password. So the way you do that is you would add a new user. From here, you're gonna give them a username. So you would ask them, hey, what do you want your username to be? So let's just say user one, for example is their username. You want their email so that I have to enter in one. I'm just gonna use the same email because I'm lazy right now. And then, you, but this would obviously be their email so that you can get in contact with them. You put in their name. So let's just go with like Levi. I'm gonna pretend it's me that I'm creating an account for. So I might as well say Levi. That's my username, Levi's account. First name, last name, and then we can add their website if they have one, but I mean, th they're not gonna have one because they're working on your website, so. Then you can either generate a password for them like this, or you can ask them to put in their own password, or you can just create a password that's super lame for them, like password so that they can log in for the first time. And then you tell them to go log in and change their password to whatever they want, right? But we'll just generate one for now. It's gonna ask, do you wanna send them an email saying, hey, I just created your account so that they can log in? You can choose whether or not you wanna do this. I'm gonna say no, cause I don't feel like getting an email for this example. Lastly, you get to pick what they can do. So you've got administrator, editor, author, contributor, subscriber. Now I've got a video on the channel where I show you how to add a new user to your website. You can go check that out where I explain what all of these do. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly which one can do what. Administrator obviously can change everything on your website, including destroying or deleting other users. Editor can basically have access to everything except for like plugins and other users, but they can like add plugins, they can add blog posts and all that stuff. Authors can only do blog posts. I think contributors can only do blog posts, but they have to have it approved by an author. And then subscriber is just someone who can visit your website and they have an account, but they can't do anything else. So you guys can decide who you want to create. For example, let's just say that Levi is an editor I want him to edit content on my website, but I don't want him to have access to like the settings of my website. I don't want them to have access to creating other users and all that stuff. We'll add a new user and that's how you create a user for your account. Oh, it looks like the email is already registered. So I have to use a different one. Let's just say example at email.com. Add new user. Perfect. And now you'll see that I am logged in currently as my admin, but I have someone else in here that can come in and edit my website for me. And then the same thing applies. If I want to delete the account, I can literally just delete it right here, or I can send him a password reset. So if Levi forgets his password, me as the admin, I can come in here and send him a password reset. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, I'm just going to delete him because I don't need another user on my account. Confirm deletion. And then when you delete people, it'll usually ask if they did edit anything on your website, it'll ask if they want to contribute anything that he edited to somebody else, or if you wanna just delete it off your website. Usually just say, yes, attribute it to my administrator account. That way you don't lose any content. But yeah, other than that, that's how you add a new user. So now that you know how to add pages and users to your website as you scale your business, let's talk about how you can secure your website from hackers. I've got a video on the channel that talks about how to secure your website in great detail. So you guys can go and check that out, but let me give you the short version right now. Most of your website security is gonna be handled by your hosting provider. And so that's why it's really important to choose a really good hosting provider like Hostinger. It's their responsibility to protect your website on the server that it's stored on. So you want to make sure that your hosting provider is up to date on all of the industry standards of security. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for a new one. And again, you're going to hear me say this all the time, but I always prefer Hostinger because they're up to date on all of the industry standards for website security and also for website speed. So they're really top tier. Most of the time, people want to hack your website for a few specific reasons. First, they might have the goal of stealing information. Whether that be financial information or contact info of your visitors or login info, whatever the case may be, stealing information can be valuable and then sold to unethical ad agencies. So another reason that someone might want to hack your website is just simply destruction. Sometimes they just want the practice or the challenge to see if they can actually destroy your site. There are other reasons as well. You could be used in a CNC attack or your website could be used to host malvertising or SEO spam. And I don't want to get into all of it right now, but there's a lot of reasons why people want to hack your website. So it's important to make sure you keep it secure. Aside from your hosting provider protecting your website and the server that it's stored on, there are some practical steps that you can take to protect your website. Password management is a big one. Make sure that your passwords are long and complex using multiple special characters and numbers and all of that. Download plugins onto your website like WordFence or iTheme Security 
to provide free security options like password minimum requirements and other features like login screen hiding and things like that. You can hide your login screen for your WordPress website so that it can't easily be accessed by other people by just typing in wp-admin onto the back of your URL like usual. Another reason your website could easily get hacked is because its software is out of date. This is actually the most common reason for website hacks. Updates to plugins and to WordPress are quite literally always, or at least most of the time, security updates. So make sure you're constantly logging into your website and updating everything. Weak security policies and social engineering is the last thing you need to worry about. Paying attention to your passwords and your team's passwords, as well as who has access to your website. That's all very important. Making sure communication is tight and don't let anyone get manipulated or confused into giving up access to your website. That's a really big deal. Humans are sometimes the weakest part of your website, so keep a tight leash on your security policies for you and your entire team. Lastly, download a security plugin like WordFence or iThemes and play around with which security features work best for you. Again, I've got a video on the channel that talks about how to use these plugins and steps that you can take to be sure that you're securing your website. So make sure you check out that video. Website speed is a very large animal to tame. There's tons of different aspects to speeding up your website and there's tons of causes that could lead your website to be slow. I've got a video on the channel again that talks extensively on how to speed up your website, but if you're looking for a quick and easy answer, just download a speed and optimization or caching plugin like Lightspeed Cache or WP Rocket. These plugins offer caching for your website as well as image optimization and other features that help speed up your website. I also recommend entering your website URL into Google's Page Speed Insight tool and checking your score. In my website speed video that's on the channel, I talk about how to look at the Page Speed Insights and how to modify your website to get a higher score. But for now, just downloading a plugin should help your website speed to a certain extent. Finally, we can talk about the thing I get most asked about, which is email management and how you can create a professional email with your new domain name that you just purchased. What I mean by a professional email is having a custom work email that has the same domain as your website. So instead, for example, having an email that says Sony support at gmail.com, and that's just an example, of course, you would have an email that says support at sony.com. Obviously I'm using Sony as an example, but you would change Sony out for your domain. So it would be something like levi.com is my website, then my support email would be support at levi.com, which makes it look a whole lot more professional. In order to get this going, you have to go into your hosting provider and depending on your hosting provider, it could be completely different, but inside of your hosting account, you're gonna set up your email. Since I use Hostinger for all of my websites and all of my client websites as well, I'm gonna use them as my example today. All you have to do is go to your emails tab, select the website that you wanna add it to, and then create the email. It's pretty simple actually. Check this out. So first of all, if you're already inside of your website tab, cause you just went to your admin panel, you'll notice that you can also just just go right here to set up your free email. You'll click on it and it'll take you basically to the same place. But I'm gonna close out of that and we're gonna go over to the emails tab like I mentioned just a second ago. And then from here, you're going to select the website that you wanna add your email to. So we've got beginner's guide to a website.com. Status is active. Most of the time it says setup not finished. So it's interesting that it says active, but we're gonna click on manage. And then from here, you get to choose if you wanna use the free email, the business, starter or business premium. You guys can determine what you guys wanna sign up for. You get one gigabyte of storage, 10 gigabytes or 50. You get one forwarding rule, 10 or 50. Email aliases and everything. So you guys decide what you guys wanna do. But if you don't really care and you just wanna see the emails that come into your website, then all you gotta do is just do hosting or free. From here, you're gonna enter in the actual professional email that you want. So you can create multiple, by the way. If you're gonna create an email account for your website, maybe you want support at beginnersguidetowebsites.com. Maybe you want sales at beginners guide to websites.com you know it could be whatever you want i'm just going to say support support at beginners guide to websites.com enter a new password and this is where you create your password and you click on create next you can configure apps which is optional you've got browser and recommended apps or you can just skip it and then you're going to be taken directly to your email account inside of your hosting account and so now you'll see that you have one out of 100 email accounts that you can have underneath your domain name. So beginnersguidetowebsites.com. You could have support at beginnersguide.com. You could have sales at beginnersguide.com. You could have management at beginnersguide.com. It's whatever you want. You have up to 100 of them. So you can create all those emails if you want. Anyway, 
always, whenever you're done, you can always view the emails that you have. So you'll see managed email accounts. We have support. You could have, you know, sales management and everything underneath. You can always create a new email account right here. And you can also always upgrade if you don't like the free and you want more storage or more forwarding rules or anything like that. You can always upgrade your plan. So anytime you want to view the email, all you got to do is go to your email tab, go to your domain name, and then go to the email that you want to check. So support at beginners guide to websites.com. You just go to webmail and now I'm viewing my inbox. Well, first it's going to ask you to log in. So that's good. So we'll log in and now I'm in my inbox. And so that is how you set up a professional email with Hostinger for your domain name. It's super easy to do and you have a hundred of them. So you guys can decide what you need them for, but you've got your inbox and you guys can get in here and customize your contacts and everything. We'll close out of that go back to your website dashboard. After that, all you have to do is just log into your hosting account and then check the email every day or every few days and keep up with your emails. You could also decide to forward the emails from that email to a personal email if you had, for example. But that's how you would set up a professional email for your business. Congratulations on making it to the end of the beginner's guide to making a website. I hope your website is everything you wanted it to be and that you can now start to use it to grow your business online. So let me know down in the comments what else I should add to make this series even better the next time. So I'll see you guys in the next video.